Coming up tonight on Talk Gnosis, we discuss the Gospel of Thomas, Logian number 24. You're not going to want to miss it. It's a good one. Coming up on Talk Gnosis. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Talk Gnosis. Uh, tonight we're going to be discussing the Gospel of Thomas, Logian 24. And to join me for that conversation is my co-host, Jonathan Stewart. Jonathan, hello. Hello, Father Tony. How are you? I'm good. I'm excited that uh, that we're we're back at it. Yeah, it's going to be great. And uh, because uh, Jonathan and I are not uh, necessarily smart enough to discuss this on our own, we brought in uh, His Grace, Doctor Bishop William Bean, uh, from the Apostolic Joe and I Church, to discuss this. Entirely with us. too many titles. There, <laughs> so I, I apologize for that. So. Yeah, it makes life interesting. <laughs> right. So anyway, I can, I can pick up some more if you'd sure, like. Sure, yeah. We could add esoteric titles and suffixes and all that kind of thing, too. Yep. Um, anyway, let me read this uh, before we get too far off track right at the beginning. Uh, <laughs> so Logan 24, his disciples said, Teach us about the place where you are, for it is necessary for us to seek it. He said to them, He who has ears, let him hear. There is light within a man of light, and he lights the whole world. If he does not shine, there is darkness. So, um, on his face, a kind of a simple little uh, Logian, huh? Well, uh, yeah. I mean, it's it's filled with you know the sort of standard Gnostic uh, imagery of of light and light within us, uh, and and one of the things that I like about it is that I think it is relatively simple. It's uh, it bits us of all kinds of interpretations if we want to add that on, but. Uh, there is just this wonderful, very simple message that if we don't allow the light that is within us to shine forth, then then we are obscured, then then we darken everything around us, and that we have a kind of uh, impact on the world that we encounter. So I, I think that that's always a, a good place to start with the very straightforward interpretations. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, the, and the straightforward interpretation is a pretty profound one, even by itself, in this particular instance. I exactly, think. yeah. Yeah. Um, <coughs> the, as you mentioned, the, the, the metaphor of light gets used a lot in the, uh, in the Gnostic scriptures in general, um, and, and the person of light, the man of light. And I, I wanted to mention that um, I think that the, one of the interesting things for me about this passage is the, uh, the use of that word man and light together in Greek. Um, is is a bit of a pun in the Greek language because the the word is almost identical. With the word yeah, man and yeah. Light. The the only difference would be uh, the the accent on the the omega. Uh, so it's phos and phos. So they're they're essentially interchangeable. And since uh, scriptural Greek is not accented, it's entirely uh, sort of ambivalent. Uh, we're not sure which uh, which meaning it it, it yeah. really is. Uh, which meaning is intended? Yeah, there is man within a light of man. Maybe no. That's yeah, <laughs> yeah. Now in this, uh, and I, I, I uh, talked about this in the sort of preparations. Uh, that pun doesn't work in Coptic. Uh, that there's no there's no similarity between those terms. Uh, light is. Uh, I'm, I'm going to mangle the Coptic here, I'm sure. You're in good um, company. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and uh, I'm a little more confident with uh, my pronunciation of the word human or man, which is uromi. Uh, so we get the, we get the combination, uh, urom, uroin, so uh, the man of light, the person of light. Uh, but it needs to be lost. And for me, I think that raises a question. Is there is there a Greek original? Are we dealing with something that has a Greek source text? Uh, because if that's the case, uh, that uh, sort of opens up a lot of more interesting avenues of interpretation. Mm -hmm. I think that that's possible. Um, and but <clears throat> even if even if that weren't true, I think that the 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 tradition already exists, right? Because people were writing that pun in Greek. And when it would get translated, somebody writing based on those translations would carry that same thing over, perhaps. I, I think so. I, I think that that a, a Greek speaker sort of reading this this text would certainly uh, understand the the wordplay. Um, but it is interesting that it gets lost in 
in, in the Coptic, although we can see that word light is sort of punctuating the Coptic text and those last uh, you know, two or three lines where it appears uh, four times, mm -hmm. uh, including one in that, in that combining form. So. Yeah, and, and call me out in the comments section of this on YouTube, but I, I'm pretty sure uh, most scholarship does think that the Gospel of Thomas, the original, is, is in Greek, and it's a Coptic translation. And we might have a Greek fragment of Thomas that proves it, because we had, uh, we had bits and pieces of Thomas before we found it in, in Naj Hammadi. And I right, think those right. bits and pieces might be in Greek, but but regardless, uh, it, it, it's um, it's it's a fun and profound pun both at the same time. Um, yeah. And I, I've read uh, you know this idea where the the divine spark, the light in, in inside of all of us, is is referred to as and, and sorry for modern language and and for my own uh, beliefs about non gendered language, but. Uh, the uh, 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 man of light becomes a very important concept of bringing forth that man of light. You know, this is mm -hmm. this is the symbolism that they use for for expressing the inner divine spark that we all have is bringing forth the man of light. Well, that was actually another point I wanted to bring up is um, what is that uh, that word man is is it does it mean specifically the gendered uh, name or gendered noun or is no, it no i person? think it is no. it's it's a translation of anthropos uh not andros uh okay. just to, to put it in greek terms so yeah, yeah. it is a human being and in fact i think the um the latent translation of the logion does use a uh, non-gendered language yeah. uh but yeah. the black translation uh always uses that sort of uh now at this point i guess sort of archaic uh yeah. gendered language yeah, and the reason why I picked that one to read is because of, I wanted to bring up the pun, and I didn't want to jump through that extra hoop, but we've done it anyway, so I guess it doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, there is, but uh, of course the, the, the word, there are a couple of different words in Greek that, that can mean uh, human being or can mean man. Uh, so uh, depending on which one is being used, there are subtle differences that are, are lost on me. Uh, but uh, so I'm not sure exactly what would be intended in the in the Coptic text. Mm -hmm. um, the uh, let's go off on that a little bit. I, I put this in the notes as kind of a, a as a maybe, but um, but I, I do want to talk about that. There's, there's a lot of discussion that goes on lately about uh, gendered language in the scriptures in general, um, and how that there you know Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are very much male figures and when is it appropriate to kind of change that up you know as as gnostic christians we have a, a little bit more flexibility in those things than our um small o orthodox counterparts a any thoughts on that well, to be sure, I mean, we do have a little more flexibility because we don't have the same kind of literary tradition uh, that we're falling back on. And I think that the best argument for using the gendered language, if, if there can be such an argument, uh, is simply a traditional one. Uh, but I think conceptually, uh, removing the gender from even important concepts like the trend or hypostases uh, is is completely consistent with a kind of Gnostic theology. I mean, look at the Gospel of Philip, where it's clear that the uh, that the spirit is feminine. So, mm -hmm. I think that that we do uh, as Gnostics have a little bit more leeway than we might do if we were to your orthodox interpretation. That said, I have to admit, uh, you know, I, I I tend to fall back on the gendered language simply because of the tradition that stands behind it. And I should, vo I should not, I should avoid that. Yeah, it's a tricky uh, situation and there's a lot of issues like that that we as, as a modern people are <laughs> dealing with right now and, and a, lot of, uh, a lot of timely stuff happening with, um, in the news especially and uh, you know, Kylie Jenner and and all kinds of other interesting, uh, interesting ways of being a person that was not uh, was not even very very discussed uh, discussed very much <laughs> in 
even yeah. just a little while ago. But at the, at the same time, I think theologically it's it's truer to the concepts to use the uh, the non-gender. Yes, language. right. I think that we're we're doing a sort a sort of violence to the concepts of of the divine when we sort of limit it when we narrow it down into some particular conception of of sexuality or gender or orientation right like I mentioned earlier that I didn't want to jump through those hoops uh, <laughs> but this this is the the kind of thing that you know this show is for that finding those uh, those subtleties and, and the differences and, and I think that I think you're right because obviously when we're talking with a person about these concepts um, I think we'd all, uh, at least the, the three of us anyway, I think that we would say, yeah, this is the, these are the terms we use, but what we mean when we say that is this is a broader concept and, and the divine isn't like you and I and doesn't have um, human gender qualities. Uh, but, but of course, that's, that's always the problem. Right. Um, right, is that no matter what language we use, exactly. we're going yeah. to be putting limitations on something that is ineffable, something yeah. that exceeds it. And I think to sort of bring it back to what's going on in, in the Logion, uh, even the concept of light is something that is a very physical, uh, very human, very uh, ordinary sort of metaphor and yet it precisely has power because it's something that we deal with on a regular basis it's something that we depend on it's something that is primal and essential to our being and that we talk about the divine in terms of light or to talk about our own spiritual nature in terms of light even though it is a metaphor even though it is analogical comes to have power and comes to have meaning precisely because of its its ordinariness mm -hmm. to quote uh, the gospel of philip the truth didn't come into the world naked it came in the form of types and images right so this is the right. this is what we have to deal with these concepts regardless of whether they're the best way of doing it or not <laughs> <laughs> i, well, I, I dine out on that gospel of, uh, philip quote <laughs> sorry go ahead I, I think in, in juggling, uh, the, that's actually one way to do justice to them, to, to switch back and forth, to yeah. use different terms here and there. And I think that, you know, I, I use that in my, my own scholarly writing. I'll, you know, say he, and then she, and then he, and then she, and then they. And, and that's a way of at least gesturing to the difficulty. So. Sure, yeah. Um, I had a little bit of, um, I, ha <laughs> I don't know how much of this we want to get into in the video and how much we want to get into in the podcast. I think let's, let's save all of the um, parallels and related Logia for the podcast. So, uh, you know, that's a teaser for all of you to stick around and listen to that. <clears throat> but I did want to mention one other little bit of, of linguistic something or other that occurred to me when I was reading this, that the words in English, um, see and seek, which both kind of appear in this, um, you know, the, the, the concepts anyway, that in order, to, in order to seek, you have to see this light, right? That this light needs to, it's like if you're walking around in the dark, you're not gonna be able to find anything, but you have this flashlight. In this case, I think that the light that they're talking about is this divine light that we um, project uh, when we remove the impediments. We've talked about that on the show a bunch, and we, that, that's a whole series of shows all on its own. But um, Of I, course, to, to see and to seek, uh, those are false friends, I think, I mean, linguistically. Yes, and I yet, know. And yet, the, the, <laughs> it, it, it does something for us, right? I mean, the, there is still a connection for us as English speakers right. that uh, as soon as we talk about light and we talk about seeing and the, the idea of, of fumbling around in the dark becomes a very, very powerful image. And the idea that we have the light already within us, that we don't have to uh, rely on an external light source, as it were. We have our own luminescence uh, in order to find the truth. You know, that's, that's a wonderful message. That's, a, that's a, a beautiful principle that's at stake there. Yeah. And I think that the fact that, that linguistically they may not be, 
historically connected is is neither here nor there. That the the conceptual uh, relationship would be there no matter what language we're we're talking about. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, that's a good place to wrap it up, I think, because I think we have a lot to go over in the um, in the podcast. So stay tuned for that. Uh, and if you are a Patreon supporter, you'll be able to have access to that way earlier than everybody else. So that's a, a good reason to uh, visit our Patreon campaign. The link will be available in the description. Um, and so I wanted to just throw out a question for the audience there. What, what tools do you use uh, to seek spiritually? I think that we all have our own little tips and tricks, and we all could, of course, do better than we do, uh, but we, we'd like to hear about the way that you do it. So please leave that in the comment section below, and, uh, and we'll get to it. Um, Bishop Bian, do you have anything that you would like to promote or talk about, or anything that you'd like, where can people find you on the internet? Oh, I, I hope people don't find me on the internet. <laughs> I, I try to crawl, I crawl, crawl into little corners and, and uh, avoid such things because I generally have a tendency to just put my mouth. So it's uh, probably best. But uh, I'm floating around in all of the usual AJC circles. So uh, I'm usually present in discussions that are on the AJC Facebook page. Um, uh, so if you have questions, uh, by all means, uh, you can raise them there, and we do our best to try to grapple with those in a way that's useful for a lot of people. So that's one way to to get in touch with me. Mm -hmm. And when is the next My Little Pony convention that you will be appearing at? Um, appearing at, I don't <laughs> know, but uh, Pinky and I and uh, and the whole crowd are going to be heading up to what is it called, the Ponyville Cider Fest in, uh, in November. So, uh, so in fact, we'll, we'll be making an appearance there. Oh, that's, <laughs> that's delightful. All right. You asked. I did. That, no, that's... It, that's, you have nobody but yourself to blame <laughs> for that one. I'm not at all surprised you had an answer to. <laughs> Uh, at any rate, so I want everybody to stay tuned for next week's show. We've got a really interesting one coming up. Uh, Deacon Michael Stroyan will be with us uh, from the Apostolic Joe and I Church. He will be talking with us about early Christian magic, which is going to be uh, fun and controversial and all those things. So uh, at any rate, let's wrap things up for today. And if you are, uh, if you are a Patreon supporter, stick around for our podcast. Uh, if not, you'll get that in a few days. And for everybody listening along at home, we'll see you next week. Good night. This has been a production of the Gnostic Wisdom Network. For more information about this and all of GWN's programming, please visit GnosticWisdom.net. The opinions expressed in this show do not necessarily reflect the opinions of GWN, the Apostolic Joannite Church, or any other organization. This has been released under a Creative Commons Attribution Share Alike 4.0 International License and is brought to you by the generous support of our patrons. To support our programs and become a patron, please visit patreon.com slash gnostic. That's p-a-t-r-e-o-n dot com slash g-n-o-s-t-i-c.